My next guest, what can I say, he helped me win a lot of championship rings. He's only one of the best coaches in the NBA and also one of the best dressed. Please welcome the Miami Heat coach, Pat Riley. <laughs> Please, I've been, uh, I have been, <laughs> for three years, I've had this for three years, okay, and I know, I know you got a hit show here, but, Buck, we got we to gotta get after Michael Jordan, okay, okay, come on, man. it looks good. All right. Please, one time, you saw what happened in the playoffs this year, that was going to be my question. What, what happened in the playoffs? Now, I know what happened with the Lakers, but what happened with the Miami Heat? <laughs> uh, we, had, we had a very, very difficult ending, as you saw. And uh, we're a young team that's uh, maturing and growing. And sometimes we're a little bit spontaneous with our actions. But uh, I'm proud of what we've done, but we need a leader. <laughs> Oh, no, we're going to be fine. You know, we, you yeah. go through these things. We yeah. went through them for years in, in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. and as much as we have won here and did in the past, we've, we've always had our problems. We always found ways to come back and, and regroup, and, and we're going to definitely regroup next year. No more that. fighting. No more fighting. Well, unless I do it. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to be the only one taking swings. You know, no. <laughs> now, most people don't know you like I know you, so I... I know that you were upset after losing, mm -hmm. and you wear that on your face Do I? Uh, a lot of times. Oh, you know I know that. <laughs> so, for fun, what, what, what does Pat Riley do for fun? fun? Well, first of all, you know, I, I've, you know, I've been watching him now all week long. I cannot believe you listen like you listen now. <laughs> <laughs> you never listen to me. <laughs> but guard that guy. But I'm an offensive player. I mean, I mean, you listen real well now. <laughs> Thank you. you know, Thank you. <laughs> With old age. That's right. Age, uh, fun. Well, I've changed a little bit. I, you know, living in Miami now, you got to have a boat. Uh -huh. So I bought a boat. And uh, can you fish? I, no, I don't know how. Well, I fish a little bit. Okay. My daughter fishes a lot better than I do. But uh, Steve and Holly Shabri are here, and Tom and Claire Calloway are very, very good friends from uh, from L.A. are here. And Steve and Holly were in in Miami. Mm -hmm. And we went out on this boat. It's a 40-footer, and I don't know how to navigate yet. You know, <laughs> I'm in the bay, and my you got two feet of water, seven feet of water, all of this stuff. And so we went out, and I said, let's go to Sundays and have lunch. Uh -huh. And so we got in the boat. It was a nice little cruise over there. And then we, we got into this little marina. And as we got into the marina, we came to an intersection, a four-way boat intersection. They got an intersection an for boats. Yes, to get to this wow. restaurant. And so. As I was trying to navigate through it, there were about four 60-footers coming this way and about three 20-footers <laughs> coming this way, and I got right in the middle of it, and then all of a sudden, I did what we did this year in the playoffs, is I panicked, okay? <laughs> <laughs> they were all coming, and I was shifting right and left and going over the top, and I did a, a, a 360 in the middle of this intersection and went back out. We never did have lunch, and you know? what, <laughs> And what was your wife, Chris, doing at oh, the time? Oh, you know, Chris. Yeah. You know, Chris. You know, she was a little bit hot at that time, but... Boating now, a little fishing. Uh, I also I'm collecting old cars. I got two 1950 Mercuries. Yeah. You ever see the movie? You're too old, too no, young. I'm, I mean, I'm, Rebel Without a Cause and Jimmy Dean. You gotta go back and take a look at that old Merc uh, that he Pat, had. Pat, don't don't tell your age. <laughs> 53. But, but you know what? Uh, yeah, give 53. it up. 53. That's right. <laughs> you have changed the way coaches dress. This guy here was named GQ Stylish Man of the Year in 1996. He'll probably win it again this year. He taught me everything that I know about dressing. So well, what happened? <laughs> Get out there. Stand up here. We got one, two, we got seven buttons. You need about three more buttons up here, I see. Let me, let me see. Uh, I can't see be the pants. Just, I can't be just like you. I said a quarter of an inch off the heel. Okay.
Okay, that's uh, it. A quarter of an it. inch off the heel. So how'd you get into dressing? Uh, my dad. You know, our dads had a great, great influence right. on our life. And my father was uh, a disciplinarian that believed that his children had to go out well groomed. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't slick my hair back when I was a young kid. It was always <laughs> a butch cut. But uh, he made sure that we went out uh, clean all the time. Mm -hmm. And when I was younger, you know, we didn't have a lot of money. We didn't have a lot of clothes. And I had one pair of pants. I had a couple of shirts, and every day when I, was, I went to a Catholic school, St. Joseph's Academy, you had to be right. And I used to have to iron my, yes, iron my pants every day, uh -huh. wash them. And so one day I was a little bit late, and I was, we washed the pants, and I had to dry them. Believe it or not, I put the pants in the oven because we did not have a dryer. <laughs> put them in there to dry, and I went and cleaned up a little bit. I came back and pulled the pants out, and there, were, there was this grill mark on the back of it. It's the truth. I went to school, and the back of my pants, there was a grill mark back there, and, and everybody was asking for cheeseburgers. And <laughs> I learned something about never going out with grill marks on the back anymore. But I think, I think uh, men have to uh, present themselves in a positive way, and I don't think there's anything wrong with, with having a decorum. Yeah. And, uh, and you have done a good job over the years. You've listened very well. <laughs> well... I just want to say that thank you for everything. Mm -hmm. You have truly helped me become not only a better basketball player, a better man, and a better person. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love you for that. Mm. <laughs> you know it. Yeah. You know it. I mean, I, we, we think about, uh, you know, the one thing... Uh, the one thing about being part of teams, you know, is you really have a chance to uh, to share things and, and not only the good times but the bad times. But we had uh, 10 years in Los Angeles. I don't care what the Bulls do. Nobody's ever going to have a better time than we had in the 80s, okay? But, but uh, and they're a great team. Yeah, they are. But, uh, you know, I can remember I, I had a great moment with, with Irvin one time. This was about two years into coaching. And, and we're getting off a bus going up in Portland. We're going to practice. i never forget this moment. And he sort of let me know something that I, that I am today, but, but he let me know something. As we're walking in to the arena, I have to go up to the public relations department, and I want to get some notes. And I told the team, you guys go that way. And it was very dark in, in this place at that time. And so as I'm walking down these corridors trying to find the PR department, I look behind me, and I sense that I'm being followed. And so I look around, and there's Buck, and there's Mike, and there's everybody behind me. And I said, everybody. yeah, I said, what are you doing? I told you guys to go to the locker room. And he said, well, Coach, you're our leader. We will follow you anywhere you go, yes. okay? <laughs> and he has. Thank and you, I appreciate Pat. it. Thank you. Hey, Buck. Love you, baby. Thank you. Up next, funny man, George Wallace. Don't go away.